I've got an interesting little demonstration here, and I'm not sure where you might put this in the curriculum. One thing is certainly with gases, it involves balloons, um, but it's just a good little eye-opener, and it's a good way of showing how math really has some power in the making predictions. Um, so, I have two balloons, and if you're wondering, this setup can be done with rubber stoppers and tubing and clamp, but this is a little different. This is the top of a little sport drink soda bottle, whatever, sport drink bottle. Um, I've got two of them taped together there, and it's nice because the balloon fits over that, and there's a little ridge to hold it in place. So I've got two of those. And I'm going to blow one of these balloons up big, and the other one small. Um, and so to tell you that this thing has not been rigged, I'm going to actually use a coin toss. If when it comes up heads, I'll make the orange one big. So heads is orange, tails will be the pink one. Okay, so here's the coin toss. Oh. And it came up tails. Tails was pink, so the pink one's going to be blown up large. Okay, so we'll start by doing this. I'm going to um, blow this one up small, and that oh, blow it, open it like this. I'll put one breath, and we'll say one breath is about a liter, give or take. So, and look at how I can just push that back against there and it holds it there. Now, how do I blow up this one? Same idea. This one's going to be large. I'll put three breaths in here, three liters. Ready? Okay. Now, here's my question. What's going to happen when I open the passageway between these two balloons? Okay, I have to pop this open and pop that open. And when I first saw this done, I had kind of an obvious prediction. It's, it's only fair that the balloon should even out, right? This is unfair. Well, let's see if that's true. So we're going to open this side, and now we're going to open this side. Hmm, the rich get richer. Not at all fair. And not at all predictable. Or is it? <laughs> Let's look at the situation this way. We started off with one liter and three liters. And there were two possible outcomes. Actually, three. It could just stay as it was. That's possible. Or it could go to the two liter, two liter configuration, which is what I would predict, and I I think most people would predict that's, you know, nature, love, symmetry, not always. And, uh, or it could go to the uh, zero and four, which is, of course, what it did. It turns out going to the zero four is exactly what you should have expected had you done the math for it. And here's what I mean by that. If we were to calculate the surface area of a zero, one, two, three, and four liter balloons, which is, of course, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, and 4,000 cubic centimeter balloons. We do that by assuming they're spheres. That's pretty close to spherical. We, of course, would use the equation and solve for the radius first, and this is what the radius would look like for those. Notice something about the radius. Huge change here, then progressively smaller and smaller changes, which, if you watched me blow up the bigger balloon, you saw the biggest increase in size of the first breath and then each progressive one seemed like it wasn't really adding much to it, but each time I was adding a liter. And then you can compute the surface area, because that's really where the stretch is, and the surface areas are given there. So how would this be predictable? Well, check this out. If we go back to this and we compute the total surface area, for one liter and three liters, we would just add together the 483 and the 1006 and get 1489, 1489 square centimeters for the surface area to begin with. If it were to go from that to a two liter, two liter configuration, the surface area would have to increase. That is, the balloons become more stretched to a 1536 square centimeters. That's simply this number doubled, right? If instead, though, it went to the 0, 04, which is, of course, what it did, the total surface area would only be 1219. That's obviously 0 and 1219 added together. So this is a completely predictable outcome. And by the way, it works with soap films too. You can set this up with a small bubble and a large bubble and a little clamp between them. Open it up and it always does this. It never does this. 
So it's kind of a neat, it's a counterintuitive outcome, and yet with the math there, it's completely predictable. And it's also predictable based on common experience. When you're blowing up a balloon, what is the hardest breath you ever have to put in that balloon? The first one, right? That's where you're competing against the greatest increase in surface area. It's kind of like a calculus problem. The greatest rate of change for that surface area is in the beginning. Each progressive one is only increasing it a little bit. So a nice little counterintuitive, discrepant event, um, and one that is some chemistry, certainly the stretch and all of the rubber and the polymer and the gases diffusing from one to the next, but it's also just a neat little mathematical demonstration. Thank you.